Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time I've got a confession to make I'm a bit of a, a soldering Luddite I've always had soldering guns that were just the most basic 30 watt, 40 watt, 50 watt, something like that in fact uh, the one I had from childhood days lasted me well into my, my 30s before it finally gave up the ghost um, and I'm just used to soldering irons that you switch on and, and don't think about and it's always encouraging to see people like, like Richard um, from UKFM uh, CB servicing channel if you um, haven't um, seen some of Richard's videos it's worth a look I'll put a link up there and I'll also uh, put a, a link to his channel in the description but he just uses a normal soldering iron he's quite happy to melt the wax in the uh, IF cans with it as well as solder with it so it's use and abuse but uh, he knows his stuff he's a deep expert um, so if it's good enough for him I'm sure it's good enough for me but I have also heard good reports about these temperature controlled irons and they're about 50 60 pound ish here in the UK ordered ordered from China and whilst that's not lots of money um, for something that I'm not convinced about I thought it was a little too much but I did spot on Banggood there was a kit for about 18 UK pounds which didn't come with the power supply but I'm not short of power supplies here and so I thought well okay let's try um, let's try one out for 18 quid so this video is about that kit about building it and trying it out so let's start by looking at the kit contents here's the contents of the kit then uh, as it arrives um, in a couple of plastic bags um, we've got the soldering iron cable the iron tip uh, the handle uh, which currently has no uh, internals fitted in it uh, that's the circuit board that goes internally inside the handle and there's a couple of uh, there's a component to fit onto there as well as several wires this is the uh, main circuit board uh, which will have a socket mounted on the front there's an LED needs to go in there and the multi-pin plug and socket here uh, is probably the biggest challenge of the entire kit because we've got to solder um, the connections onto the end of that uh, plug there and it's not difficult it's just fiddly so uh, it doesn't look too hard now um, there's one or two people on the, the Q&A on the Banggood website have been asking for instructions and they've been pointed to to github uh, there is some information on github personally I think uh, everything you need is actually on the Banggood website this is four of the images I've just lifted off the Banggood web page and there's um, sufficient on here um, for you to be able to build the kit um, it isn't so incredibly complicated after all apart from ground there's um, a supply uh, and there's two wires that feed the uh, motion sensor uh, I can just find the motion center for you that's the, the, mo the motion center which goes onto the circuit board here so that when you pick up the soldering iron it knows it's moving um, and it's just straightforward as that really so I've got a 3d printed case on the go which will hopefully be all right I don't know yet um, it's got several hours to run before it's printed so what I'm going to do now is um, just have a look at um, how the wiring is going to work and then uh, maybe make a start on putting it together and see how we go okay so what I've done so far is I've soldered on the five pin socket the LED and I've also put on a red and a black wire for the DC supply input as I'm hoping to be able to slide this into a case like that I did think about putting pin header there but actually it's the wrong pitch for a standard pin header so I've just gone with a couple of uh, 14 strand uh, jumper wires and next thing I need to do is uh, get that uh, little socket wired up out the way so what I've done here is I can understand why people might get a bit confused with this so there are actually five connections and the wire that comes for the handle has got five wires in it so I'm going to use red and black as the plus and minus supply I'm going to use green as the ground because they seem to make sense that leaves me blue and white 
So I'm going to do white for the vibration minus and blue for the vibration plus. And I've just written that on there to remind me because I'm going to actually wire the socket up before I start to, to wire the handle up. And I have remembered to put that uh, bit of the uh, plug on, even though at this point it would still fit on the end of the cable. But uh, I've done it anyway because I've made that mistake far too many times over the years to want to be troubled with it again now. So I'm going to strip these wires, carefully tin them and then uh, commence the somewhat fiddly job of wiring up this socket. OK, that's the plug uh, now wired as per my, my plan. So I know what the wire colours are, so I'm going to cover that up, put the strain relief on and then I can move on to looking at how we wire the handle. OK, so with the plug fitted, first thing we're going to do before I get any further is I'm going to thread the other end of that cable through the handle and just let it slide down to the bottom because everything else is contained inside that and if I don't put that on now I'm going to end up having to, uh, to undo stuff. So now that's on there I'll get on with wiring up the handle circuit board. Okay not the easiest thing to see, I'll put a bit of, try and put a bit of light on it for you there but that's the wires attached to the board and I've used that cable tie to um, go through that little notch at the end of the board. I think there should be two tangs on my circuit board. One is missing, maybe broke off in, in transit or somewhere, but uh, that certainly means the strain is not being taken by the wires, it's definitely being taken by the, the cable tie. So I think that's um, all that needs to happen um, to the handle circuit board. So now what we do is carefully slide that up and there is a slot uh, in the end of here for it to, to go into. So I'm going to pull that through and the slot should grip like that there. And hopefully um, we're about there I think. Um, so now I should be able to screw the end piece on. I'm just trying to get a little bit more light on it for you so you can see it again. Just going to screw the end piece on there like so. And that is what keeps the circuit board in place so that's the the wire done that was the probably the hardest bit of it and it's just a case of taking your time and being patient with the small connections and um, making sure that everything's clean and tinned and um, so that's the the lead done so the next scary bit is to connect it up and see if um, see if it works okay so I've got the um, module running off my bench power supply I've got the full current limiting on and it's currently drawing 27 milliamps uh, at about 12 volts and I've not got the bit or the tip inserted in the iron at the moment I've just got the iron and the first good sign I've got is that when I move that uh, I do get some response which means it's detecting the uh, movement of the sensor so I'm going to turn the power off and um, I'll get the tip inserted and then uh, we'll have another go. Okay, moment of tooth, that's the uh, the bit inserted. I haven't switched this on yet, so I really don't know what's going to happen. So that's the power. And straight away we've gone up to about one and a half amps. Uh, uh, current being drawn, so clearly something's happening. And uh, that should be the temperature of the iron going up. So... Uh, yeah, I'm just going to dip that in the flux and see if we're getting some kind of reaction. Yes, we are. It appears to be getting hot. Oh, wow. It it works. Or as Adrian from Adrian's Digital Basement would say, it freaking works. Um, so 230, will that now melt some solder? Uh, yes, it will. Yeah, that's very good. So if I just pop that there for a moment... Um, appears to have stabilised there. I haven't played with the settings at all yet. So I guess it's just going to hover there at 295. I can actually, yeah, the rotary encoder allows me to adjust that up and down. So I'll leave it there at uh, 250. And I guess if I leave it long enough, it would, um, it would actually switch off or certainly it would drop the temperature down. I don't propose to wait for that now, but um, 
yeah okay right what I need to do now is wait for the um, case to finish printing and hope that it'll fit okay well here's the finished article um, I've now got it mounted just under the, the shelf here so it uh, keeps it uh, out of the way of my other bits of soldering equipment I've made a bit of a clip for the, um, the iron which uh, just sits next to it there and currently the display is saying um, well, saying 298, 299, I've got it set for 300. I can change the temperature with the rotary encoder very easily, and the iron will tell me what temperature it's reached. So, if I drop that down to say uh, 205, you'll see the temperature slowly reduce as the heat dissipates from the iron. So, uh, yeah, it's working very well indeed. And um, the proof of the pudding, of course, now is in, uh, in the soldering, and I've got. Uh, just got the tip that came with it which is a sort of a, a chisel shaped tip which isn't going to a great deal of use from a electronics point of view but it was I couldn't get one with a different tip so I've got another tip on order that's going to be a, um, in a couple of weeks time so we'll try some uh, some smaller soldering when I get that other tip um, but I'm quite impressed with this now it didn't come with a power supply I'm just running it off my um, uh, 12 volt uh, supply that I use for my amateur radio rigs and seems to be working rather well. If I leave that for a few minutes it'll temperature will reduce. Uh, if I move the iron it will detect that and heat up again quickly and after about seven or eight minutes it actually switches off and again if I take the iron out it detects that immediately and warms it up again. So there we go that's the finished article. Well that's the Soldier 9 kit finished and built and hopefully uh, going to give me some decent service. I need now to actually use it a little bit and see if it uh, really does live up to um, the kind of things that uh, are claimed for these, this style of iron. I started with a confession and I'm going to say that up to now I've been really impressed for my £18. Uh, it was definitely um, worthwhile getting that. It does seem like it's going to be useful and if you've got easy access to a power supply then you know you don't need to spend any more but they aren't um, a great deal more money for a, a little power supply this one's drawing about about 1.5 amps at the highest so you a couple of amps power supply at 12 volts would be more than enough to run it um, thanks very much um, for watching hope you've enjoyed it and um, please consider subscribing if you haven't already that would help me it doesn't cost anything please check out the affiliate links in the description um, using those affiliate links uh, helps the channel anything I make will go straight back into it I really appreciate those of you that have already done that uh, in fact this soldering iron was essentially uh, got um, from, from the proceeds of some of those um, those commission sales so thanks very much and hopefully see you on the next video